Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and only three days out of the Mr. Olympia 2024, guys, only three days, can you believe it? Anyways, the first thing we got is a little bit of a physique update, I guess you could call it that, of Hari Japan. Now, for some reason, at five weeks out of Mr. Olympia, Hari Japan stopped posting physique updates. Why was that? He wasn't as clear as uh, Nick Walker, for example, who said that the reason why he is not showing anything is because he wants to try something different. He wants to like surprise everybody because everybody is doubting him. He wants to prove everybody wrong, this and that. And I was doubtful of that. I made videos about like, why is Nick not showing anything? And you know, a lot of you guys were like, well, he said, why? Why are you doubting that? I, I doubt everything. And now with Hadi... You know, it's also very much unlike Hadi to not show everything, to hide away. So the last physique update was at uh, five weeks out. And I think he received a lot of criticism at that point because his conditioning wasn't nearly as good as Derek Lansford's. And uh, you can also see the comments everywhere, basically, you know, probably by Iranians. Uh, they're kind of calling out Hunter Ambud for favoring Derek Lansford over Hadi Japan. And I don't know if that makes any sense, I, I doubt that, seriously, but for some reason, once again, Hari is not being in his usual mindset, like, he's usually showing everything, he's not hiding anything away, and he's always looking super impressive and, like, ready ahead of time, every year. You guys probably remember these videos that he was posting prior to the Arnold Classic, and, like, we were all amazed, and this is, this is the case every year, basically. This time around, he's not showing anything. Now, that can mean two things. One, same thing with Nick Walker. He is not happy with his look and he's hoping he's going to get in condition in the last moment. And he doesn't want to be criticized because he's not in shape ahead of time. And the other thing would be that he's actually bringing something so impressive that he wants to just surprise everybody once he steps on the stage and just blow away the judges and the audience and everybody and, you know, win the, win the title again, take the Mr. Olympia with a storm. And here is what we can see from Hari right now at a couple of days before the Mr. Olympia. So he is training in a, in a hoodie, basically. He's all covered up. But... They're training chest here, and he actually decided to cut his shirt, to cut it and to show his chest, basically. And I gotta say, this chest looks... It looks good! It looks very thick, it looks very separated, it looks like Hari Japan chest. I mean, no matter how much Derek Lansford tries and uh, improves his chest, it's never going to be as thick, as full, and as deeply separated as Hari's. But, to be honest, I'm definitely way more concerned with what Hadi is going to look like from behind. You know, how lean, how shredded his back is going to look in his glutes and his hamstrings. Because last year, I think that's the only reason why he lost the Mr. Olympia to Derek. I mean, Derek was way sharper from behind. Hadi wasn't exactly on last year. So, from the front, Hadi was still harder than Derek. It wasn't by a huge margin, but he was definitely harder, like more detailed, especially, you know, in the quads, he had deeper separation, more striations, uh, his midsection was uh, definitely dug out, his chest was separated and hard, and that's something Hardy basically always has, I mean, even in the offseason, not this good, of course, but he always has that front part shredded. From behind, however, it was a different story, and the difference was rather huge, like, it was definitely visible that Derek was in condition, in serious condition, Hardy was off, and you won't win the Mr. Olympia unless you are ready, unless you are lean everywhere. Now, Hardy realized that, and he improved it big time for the Arnold Classic, and the Arnold Classic, he was, he was shredded from behind, like, he doesn't need to be any leaner than this, and with this kind of conditioning from behind, his back actually looked so much better, glutes, hamstrings, everything, like, his back poses were phenomenal, they were actually very, very good, they can definitely compare with Derek Lansford, if he shows up like this, with this kind of conditioning, is that going to be the case, that's the, that's the only question, well, based on what he looked like at five weeks out, 
Can we conclude that this back is going to be shredded on the day of the show? I mean, it's definitely possible, but it was definitely possible for Nick Walker as well, and it didn't happen. So could that be the reason for why Hadi is hiding now? Is he also having trouble getting in shape because maybe he burned out from competing too much, you know, doing the Arnold Classic earlier this year, just like uh, with Nick Walker who competed at the New York Pro? I don't know guys, <laughs> I just don't know, there is no way of telling, based on his chest, it seems like he's in condition, but that's just his chest, uh, he, he does look hard, so he's going to be in shape, but is it gonna be that good of a shape to defeat Derek Lansford this year, who the hell knows, maybe he's going to surprise us by showing something at like one day out, but it's most likely not gonna happen, we'll probably have to wait and see that on the stage, I wonder what do you guys think, what's gonna be the case? Tell me down below, whatever you think. Alright, the next thing we got is also very, very interesting. It's a physique update from Rafael Brandau at a couple of days before the Mr. Olympia. He is over there in Vegas already. He's training at the Dragon Slayer gym, Flex Lewis's gym. And here he is with his coach, Neil Hill, also a former coach of Flex Lewis. And, he, and they are checking out uh, Rafael's conditioning, basically... And, you know, like, it looks good, it looks decent, but it doesn't look like some insane level of conditioning, you know, it doesn't look like he's ripped to the bones, but he's definitely in condition, and based on what I heard, based on what Neil Hill is saying, apparently Rafael Brandao is 16 pounds heavier than he was at the Arnold Classic. Did he gain 16 pounds of muscle? No way, bro. No way, come on, it's been like half a year, you don't gain 16 pounds of muscle in half a year, if that's the case, he's not going to be in the best conditioning possible, he's going to be like maybe in that I don't classic Brazil conditioning, which is not a very good conditioning, if that is the case, then I definitely don't have him in my top 5, in that case I'll probably have him 10th, you know, and based on what I'm seeing right here, I mean, he does look big for Rafa, but does he look super conditioned? Well, based on this video, I just wouldn't say so. I don't think he's ripped exactly. I mean, maybe he's just still holding a lot of water. Maybe he's about to dehydrate. Maybe he's very flat. He probably is. And I am expecting him to peak, to get much better for, for the stage and actually to look much better in the poses than right here, flexing in the locker room. But... Uh, there is also the talk about uh, Rafael Brandau like placing even higher than fifth and challenging guys like Samson Dauda. You know, and I think it's mainly Brazilians who are saying that, but let me address it real quick as well. So, is there a chance of Rafael beating Samson Dauda? And by extension, uh, Andrew Jacked as well, because in my opinion, Samson is probably going to beat Andrew this year. But Andrew actually made a lot of progress since the last time we saw him against uh, Samson Dauer, and I think he made more progress than Samson, but I still think that Samson is just more complete, you know, with those freaking legs from the side and from behind, and just overall, I think Samson is a, is a more compact, more complete bodybuilder. Andrew still has a, lot of, a couple of poses to improve. So I think Samson is going to place ahead of Andrew, and uh, can uh, Rafa actually get into that mix and beat somebody, like Samson or Andrew? I mean, I'm looking at his photo, you know, like, I, I, I would love to make, like, some sort of story saying that Rafael is potentially going to beat these guys, but I just don't think so, man. I mean, I mean, he definitely made progress, he definitely looks very impressive, at least here in this photo. I mean, like, the legs, you can't really see them, but they're kind of looking, they're holding some water, they kind of look a little bit softer, not super shredded not really edged out they don't look exactly cut all the way but like the upper body you know it looks polished it looks very round he looks very big you know the guy is a taller bodybuilder as well like samson like andrew and it seems like he's bringing that, that that fullness as well maybe not exactly crispy level of conditioning but decent conditioning, I mean, well, we'll see once he dehydrates and, like, carves up and does, and completes the peak week protocol, he's, he's definitely going to look better, but the way he's looking right now, I think he is uh, bigger, definitely bigger than the Arnold Classic, but at the Arnold Classic, he was definitely a class below both Samson and, and Hardy, like, Hardy and Samson are, 
you know, a, a definite top three, I'm pretty sure. I mean, if Hardy is his usual self, unless something is wrong with him, like with Nick Walker, if Hardy is in his usual condition, his usual shape, then, you know, Samson, Hardy, and Derek are definitely, you know, the top three, I would say the top tier of bodybuilders. I mean, like, you can, you can, you can name top tier, top five, or top 10, or top 20, or like, all the pros, whatever, but I believe there is a big difference between guys like, uh, I don't know, at this point, Hunter Labrada, Brandon Curry, and Martin Fitzwater, uh, Rafael Brandau as well, and Hari Chopin, Derek Lansford, and, 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 and Samson Dowd. I think those guys should make us uh, like a separate tier, you know, like a very tip-top tier, I don't know, elite tier, whatever you want to call it. And then there might be Andrew Jagd, who is also entering that mix, but Rafael Brandau, I just don't think so, not this year. Based on this photo, like, you could say that it's possible, but, you know, wait and see what he looks like from behind and, like, from the sides. I don't think he'll have that thickness and, and that roundness and just that density that the other guys have when he is in condition. Like, if he's not very good with conditioning, then maybe he can, like, match those guys with size and, and thickness and roundness, but then without, without conditioning, he won't place even top seven if you ask me he needs to be ripped and if he is ripped i don't see him beating uh, samson or andrew sorry guys i mean sorry brazilians i would love to make a story in which i'm gonna say something uh, dramatic something crazy but i have to be realistic i don't think that's happening this year he could prove me wrong it's always a possibility i just don't see it at this point if you guys do feel free to tell me down below all right and finally i want to talk about this guy a little bit a classic vz guy Jose Ma Beast is his Instagram name, and his name is uh, Jose Manuel. Now, he is a former open bodybuilder who switched to, to, the, to the classic physique. And what he's known for is crazy level of conditioning in the glutes, in the back, in the hamstrings. Not a lot of guys have this kind of conditioning from the, from the back. But I honestly feel like he's a little bit overrated because... I don't see the same things from the front. Maybe conditioning-wise he has it, but like, I don't think he has a super small, tiny waist and crazy classic structure. And in classic physique, like the structure, the small waist, the shape, the, the, the classic aesthetic lines, that's what it's all about. Like, that's a must. And then you talk about a density, thickness, conditioning, and that kind of stuff. But, you know, he has the density and the thickness and, and the separation and also a very nice shape from behind, once again. But from the front, it's not like this. Look at this. This is madness. And a lot of guys, like, potentially have him in their top five, top six. But I don't know, man. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. But I just don't really quite see it. Not this year. And, like, usually these guys who compete in the Open and they go back to classic physique... They usually don't look their, their best in classic physique. Like, once you push the weight and you try to get as big as possible, you kind of ruin your lines a little bit. And you go back and, you know, it doesn't look as aesthetic as it would if you, if you stayed in classic uh, since the beginning. Now, I don't think this guy really pushed his weight that much. I don't think he was that much bigger in open bodybuilding. But he was bigger, you know, and he pushed for size, I'm sure, quite heavily, and I think he, maybe he would have looked, maybe he wouldn't look better, but just, you know, the way he's looking from the front, I think there is, like, another five guys out of the top five who have better structure, prettier shape, who maybe don't have the density and, and, and the conditioning from behind, but, like, from the front, they have a prettier shape, better lines, and that's the way I see it, whatever you guys think, however you see it, Tell me down below in the comment section whatever your thoughts are on Rafa or Hari Japan. Make sure to tell me down below once again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.